Hello students, today we are going to start with a new chapter that is thermionic emissions and radioactivity. Now what do you mean by this term thermionic emission? See, I have shown you a projection of how the setup of nucleus and electrons revolving around it is there in an atom. For example, suppose this is the structure of an atom. At the core, we already know that there is a nucleus which consists of what? Protons and neutrons. And on the outermost shells, these electrons are revolving about. Now, which electrons are called valence electrons? The outermost shells, these, this shell which is in the outermost because these electrons are very feebly attracted towards the nucleus of the atom. Whereas the inner layer, whereas inner layer or inner electrons, they are very strongly attracted to the nucleus part. Now, during the making of a solid, see this is just one atom. Consider this pen. How, what do you think? How, how many atoms would be there in this pen? See, if you just take a pinch of salt, just one pinch of salt and for a human to calculate number of atoms in that one pinch of salt, it will take at least 200 years, 200 years to calculate number of atoms in one pinch of salt. So now you can imagine how many, how small the size of atom is and how many atoms would be there in this whole thing, right? So we are talking about the whole solid geometry. When we make a solid, when we perform the construction of a solid, we bring about very large number of atoms towards each other, right? So similar kind of atoms are getting towards each other. They are interacting in various forms or various definitions of energy. So what happens is the excitation of electrons takes place. What electrons? The outermost shells which are called valence electrons. They take place and these electrons, they leave the respective atoms and they are now moving freely inside the structure. Now, they are not coming out of the solid for now. Suppose we had this solid structure, okay? And I just told you that during the formation of solids, lot and lot of atoms were brought towards each other, close vicinity. Now, during that, what happened? Lot of these electrons which are revolving in outermost shells which are called valence electrons, they got free because of liberation because they, are, they got excited by gaining some energy and they got liberated from their shells. They are free. Those are called free electrons or conduction electrons. But these free or conduction electrons, I am drawing what I am representing is atoms and these free or conduction electrons are free to move anywhere inside the solid structure. So they are not leaving the solid as of now but they are free to move anywhere that is why there is the reason they are called free electrons. So now you got the idea how the free electrons are in there. That means we have heard only about the valence electrons. Now I am telling you about the conduction electrons which are what? Free electrons. So after free electrons I will tell you the electrons do also leave the solid structure as whole. That means suppose this is the solid, it has n number of free electrons. We can do some things, we can do few changes on this solid structure so that these free electrons which are moving inside, they can get out of the solid. They will leave this whole solid structure and they will get out. So how can they do so? See, each electron has particular set of energy. They are moving vigorously, they have some kinetic energy, but they do not have sufficient more energy to get out of the solid structure. So if that part of energy can be imparted to those electrons by any means possible, the electrons will gain the energy and they will come out of the metal surface or the solid structure. So now I am transferring my words from solid structures to metals, reason being metals do show the emission of electrons mostly like most uh, in most most prominent way or more accurate way metals show this or metals exhibit this property all right so emission of electrons from metals this is called electron emission now electron emission if you're talking about this term see electron emission emission means when the electrons gain the energy and they come out of the whole metal this thing or this phenomena can be, I just told you, can be induced by any way possible. I'll tell you three simple ways. First way would be, suppose this is my metal surface or a metal body, okay? I want to liberate electrons out of it. I want to eject electrons out of which, which are already free and they're moving, moving about freely, right? So one of the way is called field emission. In field emission, what we do is, 
we provide very strong electric field across this metal surface. So that is how we do it. We provide very strong electric field across this metal surface due to which what will happen? The electrons, they will tend to move in a direction opposite to the apply field. Why opposite? Because electric fields are usually applied from positive to negative charge, but electrons, they are negatively charged. So they'll move towards the positive one, right? So that means if I apply a very strong electric field, across this uh, metal surface in this direction electrons will turn to flow in the direction opposite to the applied electric field and they'll come out of the metal surface if the electric field is enough strong to give them that part of energy which was required by the electrons second one is called photoelectric emission now photoelectric emission is the phenomenon of emission of electrons from metal surface when photons now I'll, I'll let me complete my sentence so before so that I can explain you what photons are. It is the phenomena of emission of electrons on metal surface when photons of particular frequency falls on the metal surface. Now, photons are the key factors here. Now, what are photons? Have you seen light? Of course, everyone has seen light. You are still using light to see whatever video I am recording right now. But light consists of energy packets. These energy packets are called photons. So, light travels in the packets of energy and these particles or packets of energy are called photons. I won't go into much detail of quanta right now because uh, you, you'll, in your next class or in your higher class, you'll get to know the difference between what's quanta of energy is and what's photon is. So I'm just singularizing that and the packet of energy or photon are same thing. So light travels in form of particles. So yeah, light also have particle nature and we used to thought that, okay, light have uh, wave nature only. No, light too have dual nature. Light wave has particle as well as wave nature. So in particle nature, light travels in the form of particles called photons. These photons are simply energy packets. So if these photons are projected towards the metal, this electron will gain the energy whatever is in the photon and it will get out of the metal surface. It will escape the metal surface. So th this one was the second effect. The third one, which is our chapter, is called thermionic emission. Initially, we used to call it thermoionic emission because ions, what are ions? An atom, if it loses some electrons, it develops a charge. See, you, initially an atom is a what? Neutral thing. Positive and negative are equal amount of charge which are present in atom. But if an electron is lost by the atom, it will altogether hold a positive charge. If it gains an electron, it will altogether hold a negative charge. So that are called ions. So ions basically are responsible or ions are made when electrons are ejected out of it or electrons are absorbed by it. So thermo means heat. So when we heat something and ions are getting produced that because of liberation of electrons, then the emission, this whole emission process was called thermoionic emission. And later on it was after lot of studies and everything it was later on reduced to word thermionic emission all right so the third one is thermionic emission which is our chapter which we are going to do in detail so i'll tell you a bit about how electron emission actually takes place and i'll take the example of photoelectric effect so that it will help you understand more easily see photons are energy packets so what we have done is we have taken a metal having so many free electrons and photons are targeted on the metal surface. These electrons, they gain the energy, whatever energy packet these photons were constituting, they were carrying. These electrons, they gain that energy and the electrons got emitted from the metal surface. So without the provision of the photons giving or imparting some energy to electrons, why didn't electrons lose or uh, they got emitted from the metal surface on their own? I've already given you the answer that they have some energy, random uh, thermal energy or you can say thermal agitation energy to be very precise but they do not have enough kinetic energy to travel out of the metal surface. So if any external source behaves in a way that these electrons gains that external kinetic energy which is required for them to lose or to uh, uh, escape from the metal surface that will do the phenomena. So they need some external support. So this is what photon has been doing here. So photons coming on the metal surface, metals, free electrons, they are absorbing that part of energy and now they have enormous kinetic energy to get or to escape the metal surface and that is how these electrons got emitted. Now, what is work function which I have written? See, 
there were already free electrons which were present in the metal but they needed some minimum amount of energy after which they can come to metal surface and after coming on the surface they can travel so the whole part of the energy that means suppose photon is bringing out 100% of energy let us say it is bringing in 100% of energy so let us say that 10% of energy is used by this electron to reach metal surface and after that 90% of the energy is used by electron to travel out got it so this 10% this is the minimum amount of energy which is required by electron to reach at least on the metal surface this is called work function so how this energy has been differentiated into two parts is that whatever energy was given by photon that got split into two parts one part was required by electron to reach firstly metal surface and the second part was to eject out of the metal surface so the minimum energy by which electrons or the minimum energy which electrons gains to reach the metal surface that is called work function see this will give you more clarity the photoelectric effect this is the definition that is the phenomenon of emission of free electrons i won't say just electrons on the metal surface i would rather use the word free electrons because these are only free electrons which gets liberated from the metal surfaces so the phenomenon of emission of free electrons actually there should be a mark here that this is free electrons from a metallic surface by use of light or radiant energy okay that is called photoelectric effect the phenomena was discovered by lenard the photoelectric emission the metal used must have low work function why low work function because lesser the amount of energy required by the electrons to reach the metal surface more would be the effect of the emission of electrons that means the examples are alkali metals cesium is the best metal for photoelectric effect this is just a very brief synopsis of what photoelectric emission is but you are going to study this whole effect in super detail in your coming classes i'll give you one more idea see this is einstein's theory of photoelectric effect where i told you that suppose 100% energy is coming through photon 10% was used in work function and remaining 90% was used for traveling that is the kinetic energy exactly this is what he has written total energy was used in work function and rest of the part was kinetic energy what is kinetic energy uh, okay you need not to see these two but i'll still explain e is hf hf or h nu h nu is basically the energy which is contained in a photon h nu nu is the frequency of incoming radiation h is the planck's constant so h nu is the total energy which is coming so this h nu gets divided into work function plus kinetic energy all right so that is what it has been written work function plus kinetic energy now the work function it is a minimum energy required or needed to eject an electron from the surface of metal or i would rather say to bring the free electron at least up to the surface threshold frequency is the minimum frequency of incident radiation uh, below which the photoelectric emission would not take place why so this is the energy packet which it is it is taking it is bringing to electrons suppose when i said you that 100% is incoming and 10% was used for work function and 90% you was used for the traveling part what if the incoming source itself has only 9% so the bare minimum amount for this metal to liberate electron was at least 10% it does not have that so it will not produce any photoelectric emission that is why the threshold frequency comes into play because this energy h nu was rot rotated as h nu not that is the threshold frequency minimum frequency at which the photoelectric emission takes place then threshold wavelength 